guys, welcome back to today's video. And you join me from my lovely LS400. If you did not know, this is my recent purchase that I bought basically out of a barn, bought it on the spot pretty much, didn't even start it. So um, yeah, now it's on the road, we've done a couple of episodes. I wanted to do sort of a first drive, but this isn't like a normal first drive. So sit back, relax, watch the whole video, because of course this isn't a fast car. It isn't a uh, crazy car. But I'm going to point out some really cool things. First thing then was the telescopic steering wheel coming towards me when I put the key in the ignition. Something that a lot of the luxury cars have. Uh, I love a car that has the steering wheel coming towards you. I think it's such a cool thing. First off though, first thing about this car more than anything, if you haven't watched the videos, 159,000 miles. It was bought basically being sat for around six to seven years. It's been to the Nürburgring. It's enjoyed a, a, a very good life. I haven't really done any driving though. I've driven it back from the MOT so far. Uh, so this is the first time I really get to push all of the buttons, find out what works, what doesn't work, how it really drives on the road. It does have an MOT now though, which is the main thing. So underneath, it's actually all right. It needs a couple of tyres. I think that's about it. So we're, they're actually on the way. So we're going to get them in a future episode. First thing though, weirdly, someone at some point has put, or something's failed and they've put the ignition on and then you start the car with a button. So we'll do that now. The instrument cluster comes alive. She starts up. Slight exhaust blow that we are going to, of course, do something about. <laughs> I think you need, I think you know where that's about to go. Uh, yeah, we're going to do something with the exhaust very soon. The instrument cluster in these cars, if you don't know about it, um, I'll do some overlay. It is such a cool design, completely dark when you don't have the car on. I'll show you guys now, when you do have the car on, it sort of illuminates in this green you know lexus have always made cool clusters and this being the ls so the you know the most expensive model it's sort of ghosted when you start it up and it comes alive you'll obviously also see of course it has no petrol in it i bought it with around just under a quarter of a tank it's showing 56 miles i don't believe that because i just don't i don't believe that whatsoever so maybe that's the reserve that this vehicle has i'm not sure but i'm gonna put some petrol in it i'm right i'm only gonna put 20 quid in right comment section but i want to see how far 20 pound in today's money gets us for fuel how many miles it will get us and how long it will actually last as well um i'm going to zero everything as well when i get to the petrol station just to see real world on my first drive what this is actually doing mpg wise is it actually that bad second thing to really point out is the infotainment or the center console screen isn't working the heating works uh, because it's digitalized and there's buttons but that stopped working it goes on and off as it pleases so i'm going to assess that in again a future episode i am going to take my heated seat off though because this has of course heated seats has heated seats in the back as well so cool i love this car yeah this is my favorite one i've had this is the one i had anyway onwards we go to of course the petrol station to my local asda now if you don't know the isle of Wight, there's only a few places you can actually get super unleaded i'd actually like to put super unleaded in this car but it's a 25 minute journey from where we are right now to the actual nearest uh super unleaded station which is annoying you know i've had a lot of powerful cars in uh my time as a youtube person i hate the word youtuber but yeah that's the reality of some sometimes when i've had powerful cars i've had to go like 20 minutes out of my way just to get uh, fuel in them this time we're just going to put this time we're just going to put normal unleaded in in fact i'm not sure which side the it's that side of course it is we'll see what 20 quid does we'll see how far that gets us that's not me being cheap i just want to know i'm intrigued to see what the real world mpg and stuff is like in this car 54 miles Let's put 20 quid in it. Six and a half hours later. Okay, 20 pounds in, and it is 147.7 at this petrol station. 20 pound was 13 litres and 54 uh, litres. Yes, that's how much I've just put in. Let's just check what's going on. 104 mile range, it's saying. So it's given us 50 miles. Let's see if that's actually true. Interesting, now I don't have to change the trip on this. I love this about these sort of cars. I actually cycle through would tell me an average of 4.6 mpg at the moment tank average of 5.2 
and since we fuel four miles so that's i think that's from when i put the battery in so uh, what i'm going to do is reset all of this i actually have a few errands to run today so this is the perfect opportunity for me to just cruise around in this for the day i have to take my cadillac keys down to advanced automotive they have uh, got real far with the car uh, i haven't done an update yet but there is one coming and they're taking the keys off me. So that means we have a start very intimate. At in, 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 it's coming, it's coming basically. So very excited for that. So LS400 as we exit the petrol station. Why do I like these cars so much? I will say a little bit of a segment on why I like these so much and it will excite a few people. It will, you know, bore a lot. I love over-engineering. Uh, and luxury cars. I love the idea that they went so far beyond what they needed to do in a vehicle and this is the prime late 90s I would say prime late 90s luxury car. Um, there is better cars of course there is but not a lot of them I'm able to buy. Uh, these are at rock bottom prices. I think they are going up in price I say that a lot about cars though, because especially the cars I, I own, because I'm like, well, if, if I say it, then it will happen. But I do think in the last couple of years, these have even parted out, the engines have been pulled out of them, or they've started to increase in price because they're far and few between the people that actually like them, people like me, they want a nice one. Um, they're never going to be the be all and end all, you know, silly expensive car because they're not limited run cars, you know, smaller to market models. This was a you know a world car, so you know it was available everywhere. The over-engineering, even in 2024, this is rivaling new cars. And I said this before in reviews and stuff, and I'm not reviewing this car, I'm just telling you how I feel about it. The over-engineering is still very, very pronounced, even in 2024. You jump in a new car, it's quiet, it's nice inside, all the amenities are really nice. The heating is working unbelievably. I've only been in this a couple of minutes, it's unbelievable. You have electric adjustment for the top of the seat belts i love that the automatic gearbox is smooth and silky you don't even feel it changing gear i do feel a little bit of a wobble you guys might be able to see it in the camera i think that's the uh tires they're a little bit eggs from being sat so long other than that absolutely no cracks you know nothing there's nothing in this car and i can't hear the road i can't hear the wind going past the car and that that is literally it. You think how old this car is, and that's what's exciting me about this car. It's so nice, even in 1998. Could you imagine driving this in 1998, how just worlds apart from other cars it was? And interior-wise, it's, you know, 159,000 miles it's got. It's just been kept up so nice. It's done the mileage, but it doesn't feel like it's done the mileage. This seat is like an armchair in here. It's so nice. And everywhere I look, everything is still in really good condition, you know, bar the, for some reason, the screen isn't working in the center. I, I have a feeling it's something to do with that start button that someone's put in. Maybe someone's spliced off a, a wire to that, and it's, you know, maybe it's popped a fuse. I don't know. Either way, though, everything even the sunroof which i have checked it all works it all works absolutely it's big big sunroof this as well as, as wide as the car is it goes up goes down it goes back just absolutely lovely everything is as it should be cruising at 45 mile an hour just cruising not gonna you know go mad in this car you can because these are you know relatively powerful for what they are just you go scotland in this and it'd be fine anyway we will carry on driving i will do a few miles and then gather some more thoughts we need to of course pop that key into advanced automotive i might have a little quick look at the cadillac while i'm there and give it a stroke because i'm sad all in all though the first few miles no catastrophic things have happened yay <laughs> just coming past us then if the camera did catch it uh, an o2 plate long wheel based diesel s class similar uh, generation actually to this i've had one of those did sort of enjoy that actually it was quite a nice car not as good as this though and i because i've owned that car i know what it's like um this is better this is definitely better onto a faster stretch of road i am going to put my foot down at 40 miles an hour i've put the um the sunroof up because i love the look i, I sound so sad i love the look of 90s cars with the sunroof popped up such a sad thing for me to say out loud but it gives me like a yeah, that's cool. Like, it's a little buzz. I oh, know, I'm so sad, aren't I? Anyway, I'm going to put my foot down at 40 mile an hour. See what happens. Here we go. Change. 
down nice all the way around up to 60. Um, actually, it's not fast. I'll put that down so you guys can hear me. It's not fast, right? But it's like effortless. It doesn't shock you in power and speed and all this sort of stuff. But it like just comes on and says, yes, I will give you some more power. If you would like some more power, here it is in a bucket load and I will take you to your desired speed effortlessly without no compromise. There's no, oh my God, which is cool in some cars, but in this you just, you don't want that. And I must admit, at 60 mile an hour, I've got a slight wobble from a tire somewhere. Other than that, I can't hear road noise at all. I can hear a bit of wind, but I mean, apart from that, it is quiet and lovely in this car. So back in the car, just done a little bit of looking around the Cadillac because uh, I love that car. My it's one of those weird days in the UK where it's sort of cold, but it's sort of warm. Does that make sense? So I've had to dawn my jacket, but also I've got the windows open. It's one of those days. And I made my way down to my local seafront because I think I need to round off today's video with my overview thoughts of the first drive of this car. I think that's a good idea. So made my way down to the seafront. Cars, I've left it on because I've got this fear that because it hasn't been started in a while and it won't start again, it won't start again and I'm sat down a seafront. So yeah, a bit worried there. I don't know why, I've just got this weird fear in my head, but I am so happy with this car. I'm so happy that we've been able to get it, revive it in a sense. All I did was really clean it, but get an MOT on it. And now we're out enjoying it. Um, biggest things for me is that the luxury factor is still there. It's still such a nice thing. You know, we're surrounded by relatively new cars. New cars pretty much everywhere. And this is doing as much of a good job as anything else in this car park. Yes, it is probably a little bit more thirsty. I will update you guys as to the thirst. We've just obviously stopped and it is on idle, but let's have a look. So 97 miles still in the tank. You guys can just about see that. And 23.1 MPG it's averaging, which is hot hatch territory. So is it actually that bad? Um, it's been sat on idle for a couple of minutes as well. So I'm not, I don't know, we'll see. I will probably do a full video of actually going through MPG and you know, the running costs of something like this. But uh, yeah, I'm really, really happy with this car. Anyway, guys, gonna leave it there. Thank you so much for watching today's video. We'll see you on the next one.